Ladies and gentlemen, if you come to our front of the front of the box, as well, we'll be laying up in a few minutes. In proportion for our arrival, we are coming out to the road to your seat and fast in your seat. Please place your chair check off to the fully applied position, cover your ears of light, and store your language on the decision front of you. All in the all I can call. Oh, man. Do you think that guy had uh, much experience packing his bags on the airplane? I don't think so. But it made me think about, you know, field experience in general. And specifically, you know, when I talk to production engineers about, you know, how do they know if they're over-injecting gas lift or if there's room for improvement on tweaking the gas lift? It, it, it comes down to a lot of just experience uh, in the case of the people I, I've spoken with. So, you know, how do we take some of that experience and actually try to bypass it just to do some quick physics to gut check, you know, can I improve the gas lift on my well? So let's let's just talk about why do we why do we do gas lift? Well, one of the things we're hoping to do is to lower the bottom hole flowing pressure, right? We've got this big, tall uh, column of liquid is very heavy. If we can inject gas down on the bottom, it will help lighten that liquid and uh, reduce the bottom hole pressure. So, you know, if we say that we have no gas lift, right, our gas lift rate is zero, then we may have a very high bottom hole flowing pressure, right? But as we increase our gas lift rate, right, we hope to lower the bottom hole flowing pressure uh, by lightening that hydrostatic column of liquid. And then if we inject more gas lift, maybe we'll reduce the bottom hole pressure even more. And then at some point, there's going to be this location along this curve where we'll have we're at the absolute best possible gas lift rate to achieve the lowest bottom hole flowing pressure. But if we keep injecting more gas lift, we're actually adding an unnecessary amount of friction, right? All that gas stuff that we inject down has to come back up. And so basically we, you know, we don't want to be here. We don't want to be here. We, if we're just trying to get the lowest bottom hole flowing pressure, we want to be here and we can quantify what that um, gas lift rate would be. Now, the other way to, to plot this is, is this, okay? So the oil rate, okay? So we know that at the lowest possible bottom hole flowing pressure we can achieve at a particular gas lift rate, that is going to result in the highest possible oil rate um, from this well. And we can use something like an IPR curve to uh, predict both of these actually. Um, this, this really looks like a fish. I think I'm gonna call this like the fish curve or something like that. But, uh, you know, if we, if we just focus on the, on the green um, line here, you know, as we, in, you know, we're gonna have our maximum possible oil rate that we can achieve at a particular gas lift rate. And then we're gonna have where we're really operating now, <laughs> which might be down here somewhere, right? And this is actually a good opportunity because it means that there's a rate uplift available. If we can go from our current gas lift rate to this ideal gas lift rate, we can uh, quantify and predict what that oil rate uh, change would be, okay? And that's what we're gonna talk about today uh, using the Whitson software. Okay, so here in the Whitson software, we're just going to add a brand new well and call it whatever you want. Okay, we go straight down to nodal analysis and we're going to plug in some numbers. You guys can take a quick uh, screenshot of this if you want. Everything in green, I want you to plug in those numbers. Hit pause if you need to. Okay, I've got them all plugged in. Make sure you're on Haggard and Brown if you're not. And then uh, we'll just click Create VLP. So what we're doing is we're basically designing a well um, to try to plan its uh, its well bore, its, its artificial lift. So right now we're just saying we're going to produce this well with no artificial lift, 500 pounds, uh, two minute pressure, and this is the expected um, operating condition right here with the IPR curve, okay? Now we say, hmm, what's, what would happen if we um, did some poor boy gas lift? So before we do that, I'm gonna save this VLP. I'm gonna call it uh, 500 PSI, tubing head pressure, no artificial lift. And now I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And we are going to pretend that there's some uh, poor boy gas lift here. Okay, so just all the way down to the tubing and up and we're gonna inject maybe a hundred scuffs a day for gas lift. And we see if we compare our free flow and our um, gas lift case here, 
we get a slight improvement with gas lift, right? A hundred cups a day. So, you know, the old way that I might do this is I say, well, if a hundred is good, what about a million? Okay. So you, you could try to manually iterate and see, you know, where, how that would lower your bottom hole pressure and what the best result would be, but that's kind of time consuming. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go straight over to this new gas lift optimization curve over here. Okay. So over here, we are going to say modify case, add configuration. We're going to call it uh, poor boy gas lift. And we'll just say save. It should say everything set up gas lift poor boy. We'll call it poor boy gas lift. And it's important that we pick the configuration right here that we just made called poor boy gas lift. And we'll say save to that. Now it should run automatically. And so we're, we've created that gas lift curve that I've just kind of previewed in the slides, okay? So if we inject at 100,000 100, cubic feet a day of gas or gas lift, this is gonna be our operating point. Our oil rate will be about 1,100 barrels a day. But if we wanted the absolute maximum possible oil rate, which would be a, a delta of 286 barrels a day compared to this planned condition down here, to the maximum possible oil rate, right? 286 barrels of oil day difference. We would need to inject 2.6 million barrels, of, sorry, 2.6 million standard for cubic feet of gas for gas lift to get the lowest possible bottom hole flowing pressure, which would give us this maximum oil rate. So now practically that you're probably saying, I would never inject, inject that much gas lift in your right, because the, the slope of this curve, there's going to be some experience factor where you're going to say, okay, I'm going to pick this point here because you get these diminishing returns as you get, you know, on this flatter part of the curve. So, but you can start to see what the uplift opportunity is for oil uh, by increasing your gas lift rate. Okay. And just to do a hypothetical, uh, you know, 2.6 million, we could go back and just, you know, validate that over here on the uh, VLP. And you can see that this is the uh, theoretical uh, highest rate you're going to be able to achieve with gas lift uh, with poor boy as far as your, your liquid production. So that's cool. Um, what about if we're designing this and we want to do something a bit more than poor boy, we want to do, um, you know, valve details, right? Put it open, close, fresh pressures for all of our valves. So we're going to try that. We'll go modify case here. We are going to add a configuration. We'll call this valve details and here we're going to change it from poor boy to valves and i'm going to put six rows in and i've got a little i've got some of these already set up here and now our i went and forgot what our endotube and depth is so 6390 that'll be my um my bottom valve here okay so we see that the Valve depths, open close pressures, and now these will be used instead of uh, instead of poor boy. Okay, and I'll change this to uh, that configuration. And one thing I want to sensitize on here is the casing pressure, right? If 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 I'm not if I'm not able to maintain such a low casing pressure, the, if the casing pressure is higher, it may mean that I can't get all the way to the bottom valve, and I want to predict without impact on my gas lift curve, right? That's one of the sensitivities we're gonna try. So the uh, I'm gonna flash this up on the screen real quick. The um, These are the different um, casing pressures I wanna try. So 500, I'll jump to 760. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try these out right now. I'm just doing 10 PSI increments. If that casing pressure went up, what would that mean for which valve I can open? Okay, and I'm gonna just copy and paste that as the name for these cases so it makes sense as what that ends up being the casing pressure. So we'll go ahead and run these. It's gonna, it should do it automatically. If this ever happens to you, I just click uh, refresh. Okay, it's got them done already here. So what we're seeing is uh, the the purple line on the top, this is actually if we 
have all those valve details and we have a low casing pressure of 500 pounds, it, it equals the same sort of curve as if we're doing poor boy, right? Um, but then as we, if our casing pressure goes up, 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 it creates these different curves suggesting that we will be injecting to a more shallow valve, shallow valve, shallow valve. And effectively, we're not able to get the bottom of pressure as low as if we're injecting down to the bottom valve, okay? So the, the opportunity to increase our oil rate uh, is impacted by how low we can get in the well bore to inject that. And the, the opportunities for uplift by changing our gas lift rate on the x-axis are not as significant if we have a very high casing pressure, meaning we can't open the bottom valve. So this is just a quick sensitivity um, that helps put this into perspective and helps us plan our well bore a little bit. Okay. All right, well, what if you've got a well with actual production history? So this well, we've, we've done the bottom of pressure conversion on it. We've even done flow material balance analysis, and this gives us what our current average reservoir pressure is. If we go down to nodal analysis, we can just click on the calendar here, go to our most recent date, and it'll sample the, the drawdown, the rates, and it'll produce the IPR curve today. Uh, creating the, the VLP is gonna show us our current operating condition. So this well is, on gas lift about 330 uh, scuffs per day. And this is where we are, right? So again, we could manually try to iterate, you know, try to increase the gas lift rate maybe to 500 scuffs a day. Um, now that's interesting. It, it, the production rate actually went down when I increased my gas lift rate, you know, interesting. So what if we jump over to the gas lift optimization curve here and it, it's, made, it's making this for us instantly. So what we're seeing here are, Maximum possible oil rate that we could achieve would be if we're injecting gas lift at 180 scuffs a day. But actually, we're over injecting. Okay, we're injecting at 330 scuffs a day, and that is too much. Okay, it's causing extra friction, higher bottom hole flowing pressure, and therefore our oil rate is only 200 barrels a day. And it could be 218 barrels a day if we backed out um, our gas injection rate. Now, we don't want to reduce our gas lift rate too far because there is a point where it's helping increase our oil rate but that kind of confirms you know if i if i uh if i bring it to 184 scuffs a day for gas lift we could just try that out here 184 create vlp that's going to give us our uh, biggest possible rate increase available through a gas lift rate change okay so yeah this this, uh, you know, there's more sensitivities, obviously, on casing pressure if, we, if we're not opening in the bottom valve. But we can see that um, just really quickly, we can diagnose if we're over-injecting gas lift, if we're over or under-injecting gas lift. And that's what this, this uh, new method is all about. So with this guy, you know, obviously he didn't have experience packing this stuff on the airplane, but you know, our people in the field, our production engineers, they do have this experience for gas lift, but it's really nice to be able to check it and verify it and, um, and just quickly see where we're over and under injecting gas lift on our wells. So thanks for checking out this video and make sure you try out this new feature in Whitson.